What's good, YouTube? It's your boy Jay Z Bottom Lip, and today I'm going to be breaking down how to understand, how to learn a character in specific, right? So, the only character I don't know right now anymore is Reptile. I literally play every single last character in this game, and I understand them to their full extent. The only character I've been neglecting to play or learn is Reptile because I think he's very boring. But that's besides the point. I wanted to use him for this example because I never really touched his character. I came in here, probably learned his combos and let that be that just to understand how to play with him when I transform while playing Shang Tsung. But anyway, let's get right into this video. I'm going to be teaching you guys again um, how to basically break down a character, but also like how to learn about a character as you go and how this character is supposed to be played. Um, I haven't came up with a title yet. I'm kind of just going along with this, but follow me all the way through and I'll be teaching you guys everything that you need to know. Now, when it comes to Reptile, you will figure out what cameo you want to use as you get into the game. So right now, it's not very important to know what cameo you're going to use. And the reason being is because we're going to look at the movie. Also, before I start this video, I also want to let you guys know that I have a flow chart when it comes to learning a character in specific and i'll probably have it in my discord but you can pause the video if you like and look at it as well i made it just just for this video i also will be having a flow chart video explaining how to play but this is more or less like learning a character right but then i'll make a flow chart for playing against your opponent and stuff like that so i know a lot of people have been asking me what's a flow chart and da 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 so i'm going to help you guys out a lot but really quick before i start this video this is the flow chart you guys can uh, pause it if you like here it is All right. Also, really quick, too, I want to give a shout out to my boy, Dan, my uh, my boy, Danny. Uh, he's been helping me out a lot. He's been supporting me and just me giving me a reason to play this game. And um, I appreciate you, Danny. That's, that's all I have to say. I appreciate you, man. All right. So when it comes to this character, the first thing that I always look at is pokes. Anytime that I learn a character, let's say that, you know, uh, Ermac's about to come out. Let's treat it like it's Ermac, right? When it comes to a new character coming out or anything like that, the first thing I do is look at their pokes. And then once I go to the poke, I hit advanced uh, view. Then I pay attention to everything in particular. When it looks at frame data, all of these things are very important. I understand that in order for it to be a good stand poke, it needs to be around six or seven frames because that's where everyone is. If it's a little higher, that means it's really bad or it's not something that I want to use in particular as my uh, go-to string. But right now we're just looking at pokes. Right now, we're looking at highs and mids. Um, yeah, we're seeing if they're bad or, or my best buttons. But anyway, we're looking at this. I understand that my stand one is plus, so I can use this to stagger my opponent. Maybe use something else in particular. One one is zero on block. This is really good. Um, I would use this just to kind of shimmy my opponent. Uh, negative seven is also safe. You don't get into punishes until at like negative eight with no pushback. Uh, if they have pushback and they're minus eight, they're usually safe. But this one has no pushback in particular, if I remember. Um, so I know it's safe regardless. See, so yeah, it doesn't have any pushback. Um, so again, it's safe depending on what character you're using. There's only like two characters I believe I can punish it, which is like Liu Kang and Kung Lao. But I know Kung Lao's four one or so. It's a really weird hitbox, but you know that's something to remember too when it comes to learning the character. Uh, you need to also know the other characters that can punish it or other characters that may be able to deal with it. So I'm going through, I'm looking at everything. My down one is negative eight, which can be punished by a down one as well. Uh, my stand two seems pretty good as well. Uh, this one is negative eight. I mean, uh, negative 14. I think this is my launcher, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, you don't really want to throw that out. You kind of want to extend your combo with that. Uh, this move in particular, this is, okay, I didn't know this was negative 10. Good to know. This is negative 10. You'll want to space this out if you want to use this string. Kind of use it to shimmy your opponent, but if you have a cameo to cover your, your butt for being negative, you can do that as well. I understand that uh, Johnny has a 9 frame mid. Other characters might have highs that are like 6 frames, 7 frames, so they can actually punish this if I do it too close. So it's really good at this distance because the second hit is really large, if that makes sense. So you can kind of do this to, to catch your opponent off guard, and I understand that. Um, the next thing is back two. Back two is an overhead. This is really good for conditioning your opponent. Not something that you want to throw out uh, too often uh, because they can block it and punish it uh, if they're ready for it. 
Uh, you can cancel this move. I tried doing this. This shit sucks. I suck at this. Okay. So this is really good for catching your opponent off guard as well. Okay, I see. Um, this move minus four really good for staggering. Okay. Good strength for staggering as well. Flawless block. I see that is negative 17. So this is the reason why it's good for staggering. So if something is negative and your opponent understands that it's negative, then you can kind of get away with staggering the move rather than doing the full string, and which makes it really hard for your opponent to anticipate the flawless block because they're looking for it. So they won't be really paying attention to the staggers. Or you can get away with staggering, maybe backdash or so. So uh, remember that as well. Um, this string in particular is a launch string. So you don't really don't necessarily want to throw this out unless they get hit by the first hit or so and you want to go for an extensive combo, you can do that. This move right here. So we have there's two ways you can do that. Okay. Okay, alright. Um this is my down two combo. Down two is negative uh negative fifteen on flawless block, negative five, so it's relatively safe. Um this move with this does. Okay. This seems like it's two hitting moves. Remember, I told you guys about two hitting moves that are very quick. This is a high mid. This is really good for breaking armor. And since he goes airborne, this is good against airborne characters. Maybe like Shao Kahn or even like uh, 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 Tanya or so. So that move in particular is really good, really good for that. Remember, we talked about armor breaking moves. Um, so to keep that in mind, I don't think I put that in the, the uh, flyer or the flow chart. But um, there's a few things that you should just automatically know. And as you, as you go when, when it comes to learning the character. Um, what's this string? Okay, so this string is a... What is this? What the hell is it? See? Okay, so it's, a, it's it's actually a low. I thought it was a mid. Okay, so this is a mid. I mean, it's a low and it's a negative six. So it's good for staggering. Um, okay, let's see. This move is still safe. We start getting to negative when we start doing this string into nothing. So we have to be careful with that. We have to cancel that into something. Um, when it comes to canceling this into something, what do I have that is save? Okay, so I have enhanced dash attack. Um, so it's kind of like it's negative five, but you flawless block it is negative ten. Um, you can get a punish off of it if you're ready for it. If you're not, you will be relatively safe. Uh, this seems like the only thing I can really cancel to to make myself safe. Um, it doesn't seem like I have anything else that's going to keep me relatively safe. Uh, what is this move? What, what's this? What's this? Oh, this is the airborne move. Okay, so this is let's stay on topic. Um, okay, so this move is really good. It's negative. Uh, that move, okay. So it's good for staggering. I'm guessing the next one is probably okay. This one's safe. Okay, so I can kind of do that, throw that out. Then another thing you can do after you learn all the strings. Damn, he has a lot of strings. Holy shit! I never realized this. Okay. Oh, he has a, he has a, he has good strings. Okay, down three is not that bad. Okay, down four is not that bad either. Okay, so another thing too that I like to go through is all the one two threes and the down one two threes. So you have one, two, three, four. Okay, so this one is plus one, zero, plus two, negative eight, negative five, negative nine, negative six. This move is negative nine. If I space it out a little well, it becomes negative eight. Hard to punish. Even with my down one, it becomes negative eight still, but it's a little pushback on it, so it's kind of hard to punish. Uh, his movement, we start looking at his movement. His movement seems pretty good. Really good for shimmying, walking in and out. This move is 16 frames, so it's going to be kind of hard to like hit people with it. But when something is high in frame startup, you can kind of use it to shimmy your opponent. Another thing that is kind of important to understand is does my hitbox change if my opponent wants to do a high? Um, you know, certain things like that are very important. It seems like this hitbox changes a little bit. Um, but that's that's pretty good. Then we're going to look at his, um, his uh, special moves really quick. So we have Acid Spit. Acid Spit. Um, does it restand? This is one of the questions I have right now. So it doesn't restand. Does it do uh, dot damage? Let's see. 
Uh, cost one bar meter, unblockable in combo. Unblockable in combo. Okay, so we can test that out really quick. Let's go to breaker on. Uh, so my opponent can break. If I did this, they won't be able to break. Okay, I see. Okay. Okay, got you. Um, unbreakable in the combo as well, which is really good. That's pretty strong. I can get some guaranteed damage. Uh, when it tells you that you have uh, first is unblockable uh, in combo, it just necessarily means that you're guaranteed damage before your opponent can break, which is kind of helpful sometimes in certain situations. So you're guaranteed a little bit of damage, and then if you wanted to go for something else, then they're going to have to break. And, you know, depends on you, though, if you want them to break or not. I usually want my opponent to break, so now I'll have to deal with their meter. Anyway, um, you have a slow and fast ball, which can I'm pretty sure it can travel full screen or half screen. I think that's the whole purpose of like the slow ball is that like if you are getting zoned out or anything like that you can kind of use it to get in just because you have a dash okay so it does go full screen okay cool so now what i can do is do this slow see if it combos or so to catch my opponent off guard so like if i'm fighting against quan chi and he's annoying me uh how do you do the slow ball again Oh, slow ball. Uh oh. Okay, slow ball. Boom. Okay, so I can use that to get in. Okay, that's cool. That's really important for him to use. Oh, you can do slow ball without meter. Okay. Oh, I see. So this is really good since it's slow. So like since it doesn't last long, this is good for what reason? We can say that it's good for keeping your opponent in check. If you want to keep him in the corner and you kind of just want to sit here and spam this a couple times just to get his respect. If he does like decide to jump or anything like that, you'll get a full bottle of perversion. And so maybe something like this. Okay. Um, death roll. How much do I get off of this? I got 23 off of that. He goes invisible. How long does the invisible last? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So maybe about ten seconds. What about enhance? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's still ten seconds, so he just goes invisible quicker. Okay. Um Talk about my air move. Oh, he also has a sweep. Oh, yeah, his sweep seems pretty good as well. I can't forget about that. That's very important. Okay, so his sweep pushes him back, and it's minus seven. Really good for spacing. Uh, let's talk about the air move. This seems like a combo the, the ender. Um, we can always find out if it's a combo ender. So you get 17 frames. You don't get a jump in, but you get a dash forward. Um, you can also even probably throw out a couple, couple buttons. Uh, what was that one string that goes into a low? I can kind of throw this out, see if they try to break or something like that. That's really helpful. Uh, what about that one move I had? That move right there. Yeah, I can that out. Okay. Okay. I'm starting to like this character. Okay. Um. So the next thing that it was really important because I, I really want to make this video a little longer because I enjoy making these videos for people who want to learn. This is not a video for anyone who's just sitting here just trying to flick through it. So after you learn the pokes, after you learn the normals, you're going to go to your go-to strings. So that's the next thing. What string am I going to be using mostly? So we understand that this string is a little longer. I like to use strings that are a little longer for my um, for my turn and what's mids. So since this is a low, we can count this as a mid because, you know, it's, it's still pretty good and they can't really mash on it. Um, they can because it's, a, it's, it's the startup is kind of slow, but if you use it at a certain range, even if they try to use a high, it was just their quickest button, they most likely get hit by a low because um, lows beat highs, highs beat uh, mid, and mids beat lows. Um, it goes a little deeper than that, but that's just the surface level that I just want everyone to keep in mind. Um, also, too, what's this string? So I'll probably be using this string a lot, and I also would be using this string a lot. Um, if you pay attention, he doesn't have a lot of like long strings, but he kind of does at the same time. So this is going to be your full string. This is a full string. This is a full string. This is a full string. And I believe that's your full string. This one is save. Um, 
This one is negative if you flawless block it. So this is one I may not throw out all too much. It could be considered like a forbidding string in a sense. Um, what else? Um, this move is negative as well. So I won't be throwing that out as much unless I cancel into a move. And this can throw out my opponent. So I most likely will be staggering that move a lot just to be safe with it. But if I wanted to be safe, I would use this string. Then the next thing to look at it too, just to keep in mind, is that you would want to go to um, you would want to go to um, I want my opponent to wake up, so I'm gonna set him to reverse. And then he also has like a sky. He comes out the sky. I'm not sure what it's called. Let me see. Uh, head rush. Echo Valley. Like what? What is he doing? Okay, that's that. I wish I just told you what was like. Oh. I've never heard of these strings. And I'm main Quan Chi. Not funny. Okay, I'm guessing this is it. Okay. So, okay, so let's see. This move has a gap. 1 1 4. Doesn't have a gap. What about this string? Doesn't have a gap. That string has a gap. He's like Quan Chi can't punish it. That is really good. It seems like if I don't commit. So let's see if I did something like this. Okay, so he can kill me for that. What if I did something like this? If I, oh god. Okay. Okay, uh, I'm trying to think what else I can do. What was the acid bit? Okay. So there's no way to really make that part safe unless I just did something like this. And then I'm on the opposite side, which is really good because you might. This is good, a, a good matchup on uh, knowledge to understand that even if he wanted to armor there, there's nothing he could get guaranteed if I spin a bar. So, um, what about this string? Okay, so a lot of his strings just don't have gaps on them. Good to know. Really important to know. Um, so we can we already know what our go to strings are. It will be this string. Um, then we also have this string. And we also have this string as well, which is really good. Then the next thing to learn is, uh, is it negative or positive, right? So we already understand which one's negative and positive. And then from there, does it have a gap? No, it doesn't have a gap. Is it safe? Uh, yes or no, is it safe? Can you stagger it? Yes. Can you bait it? Yes. So these are certain things that you want to look out for after you figure out if it's negative or positive. Does it have a gap? Is it safe or no, it's not safe? And then can you stagger it? Okay, yes, you can stagger or no, you can't stagger it. Then you go from, uh, I'm going to start baiting my opponent to conditioning. Then you also have to see if you have a forbidden string. This is good for conditioning your opponent in certain situations. And then from there, you can go back over to positive. Okay, let's see if they're positive. Is it on hit or a block? Um, for the simple fact that it is negative on block, but on hit, is it uh, is it plus? Okay, so this move in particular, uh, let's see. Let's look at on hit, right? So let's see on hit, it is positive. Do I get Oki off this string? Then from there, you can see if you get a play style from Oki, if you do get Oki off a of play style, right? So let's say that I wanted to end in one of my combo enders, which is usually going to be your special move. This is plus 23. Let's see if I'm guaranteed anything after this. I'm guaranteed a dash for it. That's about it. Um, then from here, also too, what I can do is just let him be right there. Then I can fill that out in the neutral sometimes just to keep him at bay. This can be part of a play style as well. And then on top of that, depending on how I want to play, I can also use a cameo for that instant. Then let's go look at, let's say I wanted to use a character like, um, cause he has relatively safe moves. So you don't necessarily need Goro to be safe because all his moves are necessarily safe. Um, it also, it, it also depends on how you want to play. Do you want to do more negative strength? Do you want to armor more and so on and so forth, depending on how you want to play and how annoying your opponent is and how less of, um, attention span you have to understanding how your opponent wants to play and you don't want to deal with it. All those things come into factor when it comes to picking a cameo. For me in particular, I like setup characters, and then on top of that, I want to be able to go invisible and so on and so forth. So I kind of want to keep my opponent at bay. So I'm gonna use Darius. I can also use Sector, and I can also use Cyrax, and we'll go from there in a little bit. But right now, I just want to see what I can get with this character. So let's say I did a combo. Then I can put that down, and then from there, I can go invisible if I want to. 
and I can be annoying to my opponent as well, however I want to play. I can also get a free save jump in from here, and if my opponent doesn't block, I get a combo off of that, as you can tell. So it just depends on how you want to play. I like playing annoying. Then you see how I got a combo off of that. We'll figure out a combo later or so. Or I'll let you guys decide, but that's not really important right now. And then from there, when it comes to hard, uh, Oki, do I get a hard knockdown? Yes, I do. It just showed you right there. That's if you want to play off of Oki. You don't necessarily have to play off of Oki. But Oki comes with a whole different play style where you can get hard and blockable, say 50 50, so on and so forth. Now we can go all the way down to play style and we can determine our play style with this character. What do you think this character play style is? I'll leave it up to you guys in the comments. Then we're going to be like, um, I'm going to give you guys a few things and I'll let you guys decide. What do you guys think his play style is? Um, how do you think he should be played? His strength and weaknesses. And, um, you know, tell me what you guys think. I wanted to make this video a little longer than usual so we can break down a character. And you can apply this to every character that you play. And if you guys are confused on how I do this, or if you're confused on how to understand it with your character in particular, just leave a comment below. And if you guys can leave a like or a dislike, anything is anything that you want to do as far as in giving me a like or a dislike is totally up to you. But I appreciate the feedback nonetheless. And that's all I have for you guys for right now. Again, if you guys want this flyer or so to keep to yourself, and use it when you need it just join the discord it will be in there for you guys to download again i appreciate you guys have a good day